Chapter 13 Primary Occupations Even as man fulfills his needs, he tries to enrich his life. For this, he does different types of work. These are called occupations. In the seventh standard, we have obtained preliminary information about occupations. In this and the following chapter, we shall seek more information on occupations. Primary Occupations The occupations based on natural resources are called primary occupations. Hunting, collection of forest produce, animal rearing, fishing, farming that is agriculture, mining etc. are primary occupations. In order to fulfill the increasing demands made by the growing population and in order to find an alternative to human labor, mechanization was introduced in primary occupations. The following table shows the natural resources required for primary occupations, the factors that influence them and the effects of natural hazards on those occupations. Study the table. Primary Occupations Agriculture Necessary Natural Resources Land Soil Sunlight Water Influencing Factors Natural Slope of Land Quality of Soil Conducive Climate Regularity in Rainfall Man-made Seeds Organic and Chemical Fertilizers Pesticides Implements, Irrigation Facilities Natural Hazards and Effects Storms, Excessive Rains, Floods Soil Erosion, Loss of Crops Famine, Locust Attack Fungal, Pest Attack, Loss of Crops Primary Occupations Animal Husbandry Necessary Natural Resources Land, vegetation, animals, water, sunlight. Influencing factors, natural. Availability of fodder crops, vegetation, conducive climate. Man-made, different breeds of animals, veterinary facilities. Natural hazards and effects. Floods, heat or cold waves, famine. Epidemics, Loss of Animal Life Primary Occupations Fishing Necessary Natural Resources Marine Flora Water Aquatic Biodiversity Influencing Factors Natural Extensive Continental Shelves Confluence of Hot and Cold Currents Growth of Planktons Man-made Fishing Agriculture This is the most important occupation so far as the subsistence of human beings is considered. The food requirement of the entire human race is fulfilled through this occupation. Besides, this occupation provides raw materials to a large number of industries. Hence, Agriculture is considered to have an all-encompassing nature. On the basis of the size of farms, farming methods, that is techniques, crops grown, purpose of farming, etc., different farming types are identified. Of these, we shall study the following types. Intensive Agriculture Extensive Agriculture Plantation Agriculture See Figure 13.2 Intensive Agriculture In the areas where population is dense, attempts are made to obtain maximum production from small-sized farms. This type of agriculture is called Intensive Agriculture. In order to increase the production, Maximum use is made of hybrid seeds, chemical fertilizers and irrigation facilities.
small size of farms, limited mechanization, maximum use of human and bovine resources, need of cultivating different crops mainly for subsistence or characteristics of intensive agriculture. In India and in a number of South Asian countries, this type of agriculture is being practiced for many centuries. Extensive Agriculture In areas of low density of population, where a single farm owner holds thousands of hectares of farmland, extensive agriculture is practiced. As this type of agriculture is spread over vast plains, machines are used for various farming activities. Wheat and corn are the main crops taken in this type of agriculture. Most of the farm produce is sold in markets. Hence, this farming is also called commercial grain farming. Use of modern technology, minimum use of human labor, large-scale capital investment, cultivation of a single crop over a vast area are the characteristics of this type of agriculture. Extensive agriculture is not seen much in India. However, in countries like the United States of America, Canada, Russia, extensive agriculture is practiced. Plantation Agriculture This type of agriculture is practiced in Asian and African countries, but it was initiated in these areas by European colonizers. They needed an assured and continued supply of tea, coffee, cocoa and other beverages and of raw materials like rubber required in various industries. For this purpose, they established various companies and initiated this agriculture. In this type, a single crop like tea, coffee, cocoa, rubber, coconut, etc. is taken over extensive land stretches year after year. This type of agriculture is practiced on a commercial basis and using scientific methods. Large sizes of farms, requirement of skilled and unskilled labor, high order capital requirement are the characteristics of plantation agriculture. In most of the plantations from one sown plants, production is obtained for many years. In India, Plantation agriculture is practiced in states like Assam, Kerala, Karnataka, Jammu and Kashmir and Himachal Pradesh. Animal Husbandry Animals are used in agriculture, transport and many other types of work. Moreover, we get milk, eggs, meat, skin that is leather, etc. from animals. Hence, animals like cows, oxes, buffaloes, horses, pigs and poultry birds, etc. are reared. Animal Husbandry as a Subsidiary Occupation This occupation is practiced as subsidiary to agriculture for the following reasons. The energy required in agriculture can be obtained as animate energy. The financial requirement of farmers can be partly fulfilled through it. Animals provide manure required for agriculture. Grass and other fodder required for animals can be obtained through agriculture. In order to fulfill the urban demand for milk and milk products, animal husbandry and cooperative dairy industry was established on a large scale at Charles Gao, Varnanagar, Mumbai in Maharashtra and at Anand in Gujarat. This gave momentum to the project White Revolution or Operation Flood in India. Animal Husbandry as a Main Occupation In India, some tribes practice animal husbandry as their main occupation. For example, Dhangars in Maharashtra, Todas in Karnataka, 
Bakkarwals in Jammu and Kashmir and Gopals in Saurashtra. In the world, animal husbandry is practiced on a commercial level in the temperate grasslands like the prairies in North America, pampas in South America, belts in South Africa and downs in Australia. See figure 13.3. Through this, milk and milk products as well as meat is produced on a large scale. It contributes to the national income. Fishery Due to the growing population, fisheries have gained importance along the agriculture and animal husbandry. Fish provide food, oil, fertilizers, medicines, etc. to man. Science and technology has greatly contributed to the progress of fisheries. Due to mechanized trawlers and nylon nets, fish catch has increased. Identification of fishing areas through satellites, efficient transport facilities, cold storages, timely warnings of danger, processing of fish products, etc. have all contributed to the development of fisheries to a great extent. Generally, two types of fishery are identified such as freshwater fishery and marine fishery. Marine fishery is carried on in coastal areas and in open sea. It is done on commercial basis for local markets as well as for export. Fish is caught on a large scale. In marine fishery, Maharashtra is a leading state in India. Freshwater fishery is carried on in rivers, lakes, reservoirs, etc. West Bengal is a leading state in this type of fishery. However, this type of fishing is practiced on a local scale. Recently, fish is being cultivated using fish seed. It is called fish farming. Mining This occupation depends on mineral wealth. Different metallic and non-metallic minerals exist in the earth's crust. However, they are not uniformly distributed. Specific minerals are concentrated at particular locations. This occupation can be profitable if it is started at locations where a mineral is available in sufficient quantities. Therefore, this occupation is called a location-specific occupation. For example, Jharkhand and Goa states have large reserves of iron ore. Hence, mining has concentrated in these states. For mining occupation, besides the availability of the mineral, labor, capital and transport facilities are essential. Due to mechanization, this occupation has now started developing further. Machines like drillers, crushers, cranes, etc. are used in this occupation. Electrically operated cradles or lifts are used to take laborers deep into the mines. As electricity supply and facilities of ventilation are now created deeper into the mines, the intensity and frequency of accidents has reduced considerably. However, accidents like collapse of ceiling Flooding of groundwater in the mines do occur. Therefore, this is considered to be an accident-prone occupation. Ill effects of mining on the environment. Extraction of minerals using machines can lead to terrible noise pollution. During this work, huge amounts of dust get mixed in the surrounding air leading to air pollution. Once the mineral store is exhausted, the mining areas become totally deserted and such regions cannot be reused. For example, gold mines at Kolar in Karnataka.